We talk a lot about gaming hardware on this channel, and certainly talking about GTX Titan X benchmarks and FreeSync monitors is awesome, but something we don't talk about a ton is workstation computers. A lot of high-end consumer processors and graphics cards will also do great for professional work applications, but for heavy-duty, visual design, or engineering work, a lot of pros and companies depend on well-built, reliable, and modular workstations. It's that last point that Lenovo's P-Series has really taken to heart, although calling them well-built as well would be a bit of an understatement. Ugh. So here we have the Lenovo P300 and P700, the entry-level and high-end workstations in the P-Series. The lineup also includes the P500 Mainstream and P900 flagship models, which all come in various configurations, some with Intel Xeon or Core processors, and NVIDIA Quadro or Tesla GPUs pre-installed. Now, I'll be honest and say I haven't had a ton of experience with workstations, but I can still appreciate what Lenovo has done here. I think it makes sense that professionals are tired of having ugly, boxy things with a mess of wires inside as their work machine. Instead, with the P-Series, we get a solidly constructed, highly engineered system of modular tool-less components. This is much more obvious looking at the P700 than the P300, but the same design principles trickle down. So let's look at the bigger guy here, and keep in mind, pretty much every hardware component and piece of software included with these machines is customizable when you buy. They can come with Windows 7 or 8.1, so rather than going over the specific configuration we have here, I'll just be talking about the unit as a platform. The entire exterior of the case is made from a single sheet of steel, save the side panel, which is removable, and gives a clean, minimal, yet also functional look with integrated handles at the front and the back. On the front, we have an SD card reader for USB 3.0 ports and two flex bay drive slots, which we'll talk about more in a bit. That's surrounded by a honeycomb grill that according to Lenovo moves air most efficiently. Speaking of moving air, let's pop the side panel off using the mechanical lever here, which can be locked with one of the included keys at the back. In the interior, we're met with a very Interesting shape. It's a complex air baffle that directs the air from the front of the case to each component and then out the back. The interior of consumer cases is usually one big cavity so that heat coming off one component could then mix in with air cooling another component. This design solves that problem by ensuring every component gets a nice cool supply of air, which is especially important when you have dual Xeon CPUs right next to each other. If any fans fail, they can be easily replaced within seconds thanks to the case's modular design. Which brings us to the rest of the interior. Let's remove the air baffle so we can take a gander inside. Looking inside the case, we see a number of red markers. Each one of those indicates a modular component which can be removed and replaced with no tools and minimal fussing with cords as part of what Lenovo calls their flex system or fully loaded experience. This includes the power supply that comes in 650 or 850 watt versions and drive trays that can hold one 3.5 inch or two 2.5 two inch drives whose power and SATA connectors do need to be manually disconnected, although you can opt for connectors mounted on the back panel for easy installation. Another Flex component is the Flex Connector, a small PCIe-based slot that allows you to install a RAID, I.O. expansion, or M.2 SSD card without taking up a full-sized PCIe slot, which optimally are reserved for full-sized Quadro and Tesla GPUs. There's also the front-facing Flex Bay, which can accommodate 5 and a quarter inch modules like optical disk drives or even additional I.O. ports, card readers, or storage drives. As for the rest of the machine specs, it supports two double-slot GPUs, up to 384 gigs of RAM thanks to the 12 DIMM slots, and up to 12 storage devices including the drive bays and flex storage connector. It's important to note that the integrated graphics in the included Intel chipset are disabled by default, so you will need a graphics adapter to power a display. Now it's time to look at the little brother, the P300. While this chassis shares the same design language as the P700 with a steel matte finish on the exterior, the interior looks very different. We are reminded, looking at the P300, that this is indeed the entry-level workstation in the lineup, so we won't get any of that excellent directed airflow or easy-to-use modules, although you can opt for a flex bay for the front-facing drives, and there are removable drive bays that, curiously, only support 3.5-inch hard drives. The 450 watt power supply resides at the top, held in place by standard sized screws at the back. The P300 supports Intel Core or Xeon processors up to the E3 1281, up to 32 gigs of DDR3 memory, up to two single slot NVIDIA Quadro GPUs, and up to four storage devices. Both workstations come with a pretty standard issue membrane keyboard and mouse, no special bells and whistles there, but enough to get you up and running real quick. 
Well, there you have it, a look at Lenovo's latest workstation lineup. Unfortunately, we don't have the P500 or P900 on hand to demonstrate those devices' modularity, but hopefully the P700 gives a nice in-between look at the general principles. If you want more information on Lenovo's P series, you can click here or the links in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Like or dislike the video, whatever floats your boat, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.